Be inspired with the special message from Bishop Macedo. Hello, dear friends. A very good morning. May God bless you all. And may the Holy Spirit guide our thoughts in this meditation because I consider this meditation that we are going to start doing from now on every single day during this week. For me, it's the most revealing one there is. Nothing is more revealing than what concerns you, me, and the poor ones, the rich ones, the ugly ones, the beautiful ones, to men, to women, to every human being, to kings, queens, princes, and as well as the servants, the slaves, the workers, everyone. Today's subject concerns the religious and non-religious. It concerns those who believe and those who don't believe as well. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Whoever the person is, the subject that we are going to deal with concerns them as well. Everyone, without exception. There is no exception at all. Zero exception. And that's why it's important for you to have your Bible open, if possible, for you to read and follow the reading of the text so that your reasoning may be developed in this subject that speaks of life after death. Everyone wants to know what will happen after death. Everyone, isn't it? And because of many people not knowing what will happen after death, they end up ending their life because of the problems, thinking that they will rest, thinking that they will be sleeping. But in reality, it's the greatest deceit that the devil preaches in this world because he tells people, those who are desperate, saying, oh, just end all this already because you rest. But that's a lie. You who hear this voice telling you to end your life, that you will rest. No, you are not going to rest at all. That's when you are going to suffer even more. That's when this person will be tormented and will not have a solution anymore. There is no solution anymore. Once the person goes to eternity, there is no solution. There is no way to reverse the situation anymore. They cannot make choices anymore. Why? Because it's here in this world, while we are alive, that we decide where our soul will go after death. Straight after death. And only one person would be able to speak of the subject of what happens after death, who is God himself. He wasn't a prophet, a king, it wasn't a patriarch, it wasn't an apostle, it wasn't an evangelist, it wasn't Paul, Peter, neither John, no. It was God himself through his son, the Lord Jesus, who reveals what comes right after death. So you know now what comes after death. This spoken and taught, proclaimed by the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the one who said it. He's the one who taught it. And this text is exclusive and unique in the whole 
scripture. No other holy text expresses this clearly, this with such precision, what comes after death as this one. No other except the one that we are going to meditate during these following days. So let's go there. Open your Bible, if possible, in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 16, from verse 19. Let us meditate. Jesus said, Jesus is the one who said it. There was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and fed sumptuously every day. So, he gives here. First, he speaks about this rich man and you see here that there is a contrast between the rich and the poor because he also speaks of the poor. But there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, full of sores, who was laid at his gate. So, on one spectrum, we have a rich man, filthy rich, who would ostentate his wealth, and on the other side of the spectrum, you had Lazarus, poor, miserable, full of sores and infirmities. We assume it was leprosy from the top of his head to the tip of his toes. And he expected, he desired to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table but he was outside of the house of the rich man's house. So, in reality, he was outside, far from where the rich man was at, in his house, in his majestic and wealthy house with um, abundant table. And Lazarus was outside by the gate, followed by dogs. The dogs would keep company of him who would lick his wounds, his sores. It's what the text says. Desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. So, we have here two extreme situations. The rich very rich and the poor, miserable and disgraced, hungry, sick, near death. Two situations. When Jesus mentions these two situations, he is saying, in my point of view, in my understanding, he is saying that all of us are included here. All of us are included in this context. Either you are on the side, or, or better, you are in the situation of the rich man, or you are on the side of the poor and miserable Lazarus. But in between these two, you are there, I am there, we are all there. As long as we are living in this world, whether you like it, accept it, or not, it doesn't matter. This is the situation. So it was, the, the text says, that the beggar died. And so it was that the beggar died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. So let's once again see two extremes here. This will happen to all of us. 
Either we are going to die and the angels are going to carry us to Abraham's bosom, let's say where Abraham is. Abraham's bosom is where Abraham was, or he is right now. Or you are going to this place carried by the angels, meaning when the soul, when your soul, my soul, detaches from our body, then it will be carried by the angels, by the angels, true angels, we suppose, to Abraham's bosom where Abraham is, to the city of Abraham, we can put it this way, or the person will be buried, just buried. It's important to note that when Jesus, in these verses here, when he speaks of the rich man, he does not mention his name. As he mentions Lazarus' name. And there's a reason for that. The reason why Jesus doesn't mention the name of the rich man, but he mentions the name of the poor man. And this happened when Pharaoh in Egypt, back in Egypt, commanded the midwives to kill all the boys, the newborn babies, in the times of the Israelites' slavery in Egypt. But there were two midwives, two midwives that disobeyed the commandment of Pharaoh. They ran the risk of losing their life because if they were caught, then they would be killed due to their disobedience to Pharaoh. But the interesting fact is that their names are mentioned, are mentioned there in the Bible. We are going to speak more about this in the future. But their names are mentioned. But Pharaoh's name was not mentioned. It's not mentioned. What does it mean? It means that God honors those who are His by mentioning, registering their names in the Book of Life above all, but also here in the Holy Scripture. He mentions the names of the heroes of faith just as he ignores the names of those who were discarded, that were excluded because they didn't honor him. This means that those who honor the Lord are honored by him, he on earth. And those who do not honor the Lord are rejected by him. So the case here of the rich man who was rejected and his name not being mentioned was due to the fact that he, this rich man, and this is actually a fact, it's not a parable. It's not a parable. A parable, you have to understand the following. When it speaks of a parable, it is, let's say, a. it's a parallel, it's an analogy, a fictitious analogy, but that is trying to explain a truth. Jesus said, I am the door of the sheep. He is not a door. He is God. But when he said that he was the door of the sheep, he was saying that he is the entrance to the pastures where the sheep can enter and find safety and a dwelling place for them. So it's a parallel. Now, when it speaks of a story, when it's a fact, a biblical fact, 
then the name of the character is mentioned, which is the case of the poor man. Lazarus had his name mentioned, spoken by the Lord Jesus himself. This is very nice. And so many other examples that there is in the Bible that you are going to see in the New Testament. You can see that Jesus mentions the names of those who are faithful, but the unfaithful ones, he would discard them. Anyway, let us go back to the text so that we can keep in line here with it. So, there was a rich man, and this rich man clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. He fared sumptuously every day. So Jesus makes sure to mention this detail or these details. He clothed in purple and fine linen, which is what people like, isn't it? We like to dress the best. We try to dress with the best. So the rich man, back then, he was already dressing in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day meaning that his life was one to be jealous, envious of, a perfect life, a wonderful life, physically speaking. But also there was a beggar. It's the other side of the coin. But there was a certain beggar, and then it says the name, Lazarus, named Lazarus, the name of the poor beggar, full of sores. He was there laying at the gate, thrown to the cockroaches there at the gate of the, the huge house of the rich man, full of sores, the opposite of the rich man. So everything good that the rich man had, it was bad in Lazarus' life, two different situations. And he was hungry. The rich was not hungry because every day he enjoyed in abundance. He ate from the best sumptuously. But the poor and beggar Lazarus only desired, he only dreamed of eating of the crumbs, just the crumbs which would fall from the rich man's table. And the dogs, so the dogs belonged to Lazarus. You know that usually a beggar always has a dog, a faithful dog that won't let go of the beggar. You know, human beings ignore the beggars, but the dogs don't. The dogs that are irrational, they are faithful to their owner. So he had his dogs that would come and lick his sores as though they were expressing their affection. They were showing their love towards Lazarus, trying to help him. Or if I could, I, would, I can't do anything for you, but I will lick your sores so you can feel less pain. Anyway, that was the situation of the rich man and the situation of the poor man. However, when the beggar died, just as the rich man also died and all will die, everyone dies, there was also a difference there. The beggar was carried by the angels and that's what happens when a person dies inverted coma here because those who are of god they don't die did you know that those who are of god those who truly are of god they never die never jesus speaks about this pay attention 
just wait a moment. Let me find here the text where he speaks about this. Two times that Jesus speaks about eternity, when we give our lives to Jesus, then it's not possible to die anymore. Jesus said like this, chapter 8 and verse, if I'm not wrong, 51. That's it. John 8, 51. I will leave it here in the caption for you to meditate later on. Jesus said like this, Most assuredly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he shall never see death. He shall never see death. He also says, again, it's not just this time. There in, in, in the following chapter, John as well. How wonderful, isn't it? He said, and whoever lives and believes in me, shall never die. Shall never die. Do you believe this? Do you believe? But this is what is reserved to those who are born of the water and of the Holy Spirit. Those who have the Holy Spirit that bears witness that bears witness inside of each and every one of us that this will happen or that this has already happened as long as the person remains faithful until death or until, let's say, their promotion, their promotion to heaven, not death, but promotion. When a person which is what I'm sure that will happen to me. And I want the same to happen to you as well. And that's why we are here to announce, to speak, to exhort, and to pass on to you this faith, the faith of eternity. When Jesus came into this world, he didn't come to bring an abundant life in concerning to money and ostentation and fine linen. No, he came to bring an abundant life, meaning eternity inside of us. It's eternal life. So, once the person lives and believes in him, they shall never die. These are the words of Jesus. He said that twice. He said that twice. The first time he says there in John 8, 51. And the second time is in John 11, 26. Twice he says this. If anyone lives and believes in me, shall never die. So, I will speak of what's going to happen to me. When I fall asleep, and the world will think that I've died when I fall asleep because death for us is not... This is very nice. It's as though you are going to bed. Well, I was going to bed. Okay, I'm going to sleep. And then I put my head on the pillow. It usually takes a few minutes to fall asleep. So eventually I fall asleep. I don't know when, but I will fall asleep eventually. And so that's how my death is going to be. I will fall asleep and I will wake up before my eternal Father. I will not wake up in this world anymore. I will wake up there in the kingdom of heaven where Abraham is. This has to happen to you as well with all those who live and believe in the Lord Jesus. Isn't this wonderful? The unbelievers don't know that. People out there have no idea 
concerning this. When we speak of Jesus, people think that we are trying to bring people to our religion. But this is such a nonsense. We want people to have life and eternal life. The abundant life that Jesus promises is eternal. It's not possible for us to have abundant life here in this filthy world, in this world full of injustices, cruelty, evil, and perversity. It's impossible. You can have all the money in the world, but you will always suffer due to this world being a place that is condemned to death. But when you truly live and believe in the Lord Jesus, then you fall asleep here in this world, the moment that you are going to be promoted, and you are going to wake up where? You will wake up before your eternal Father. How wonderful, isn't it? This is too wonderful. This is an incalculable wealth, an immeasurable wealth. And that's what happened to the poor Lazarus, that in reality was not poor, he was rich. To the eyes of the world, he was miserable, unhappy, disgraced. But he was rich before God. So much so that when he died, the angels of the Almighty came to carry him, to carry his soul. His body was left here. But when the rich man died, because the man also died, the rich man didn't fall asleep. The poor Lazarus fell asleep and woke up in paradise. But the rich man died and woke up in hell. Tomorrow we are going to speak more about this subject, okay? But let us meditate on this subject with much calm and tranquility. If you cannot watch this broadcast until the end, there is no problem. It will be at your disposal here. Any time of the day or the night, you can watch it, okay? We are going to speak more about this in these following days. And this brings joy to my soul to have the privilege of passing on to you what God has given me. May God bless you, and I'll see you tomorrow in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God.